and welcome back to Let's Play Darklands with me, Polar Dash. Uh, last time we, uh, or, or I, <laughs> let me correct myself, uh, I, I spent, uh, I think over an hour and a half creating our four heroes and, uh, putting you through all sorts of, uh, tutorial infos boredom. Uh, and yeah, you know, I, I, I probably could have, like, condensed it down to, like, like 15 minutes less than maybe you know maybe like between 15 and 10 minutes but uh you know to be honest i just wanted to show you guys the spiffy and awesome character creation system this game has to offer i just uh you know incidentally uh, spent over an hour and a half doing it <laughs> um but uh yeah and all that tutorial stuff that i talked about you know you it all probably left your heads already and that's okay like I said, I just wanted to show you guys the character creation system and um, all that other info that got in between it. it it's cool. Um, it'll sink in eventually. You know, like with the skills and stuff, they, they all, they're all like, you know, self-explanatory, pretty much. Um, I think the only thing left that I'll say, like, you know, as the skills come up is the, the real techni technical stuff. You know, during the downtime that's gonna happen eventually in this game. It's just that, uh, you know, this beginning part, I just, I'm just, like, throwing all this information at you because, uh, you know, just so we're, we're looking, watching this game at, at, you know, equal eye level. So that um, the choices that I make during this game, you'll understand why. You know, because you'll have all this vast knowledge thanks to me wasting your time. Okay. Now, uh, before I start, <laughs> there is uh, one thing I wanted to mention was that... Um, Dealing with the, the randomly chosen characters here, um, for those of you that I asked uh, if I can use your names that weren't picked randomly, uh, have no fear. Uh, these guys, one of these guys will eventually die, and uh, when that happens, uh, they'll be replaced by, uh, yeah, you, chosen randomly. So, um, you can look forward to that, or not, or whatever. Um, and also, uh, these guys will die when they're... Uh, green bar here, the strength bar reaches zero. I think I forgot to mention that before. I said that when this reaches zero, you fall unconscious, but when this fall reaches zero, uh, you die. But, again, that's probably, you know, pretty obvious. Um, it probably didn't even need an explanation. So I just wasted another uh, 30 seconds of your time right now. I, I'm good at that. <laughs> um, and also, uh, for any of you that's watching, that I, that I didn't, you know, send a, a something to a ask your permission if I can use your name or whatever um, if you want uh, a place in my list of randoms uh, just let me know and I'll throw you in there and maybe uh, one day eventually uh, you might be you might have the honor of finding that Staxiana you know for righteousness and and uh, butt kickery for Jesus and stuff okay I think uh, I need to start because we have a lot of things to cover. It's it's still the tutorial bit of this game, and uh, I want to uh, show you guys what I usually do. You know, you know, show you the ropes, quote unquote, of what I do uh, when I start this game. Um, so uh, that includes like equipping our stuff, guys, with stuff that I'm missing, and uh, we'll take a tour of the relevant places that uh, we need to visit in the city of Gosler. And then we'll also go need to fight stuff, because you guys want to see combat. Alright. So let's get into the game. We are looking down the main street of Gosler, and um, Tobias says that we want to head toward... We've got a bunch of choices. We can go to the Start Splaz, the political center of Gosler. Oh, yeah, another disclaimer. Um, all these German names that's going to come up in this game, I am going to uh, undoubtedly pronounce every single one of them wrong. So I'll be prepared for that. And, uh, hey, if you want, you can try to fix it for me, but, yeah, I don't know. I have no clue how you how you would get me to fix it. Maybe, maybe, maybe in the comments, put it, like, sound for sound, you know, like, phonetically or something. But, you know, whatever. All right, so we're going to head toward there, or we're going to head toward this uh, Kaiser Faz, the great fortress overlooking the city, or the Market Plus, the central market of Gosler. I think that's where we want to go. And then we'll eventually go to these uh, the churches here and slip into a dark side alley for the guilds and um, and other places. All right, so let's go to the market. All right, so going down the market plaza, the main market of Gosler, it is bust is the bustling center of all business activity. 
Stalls and pavilions fill the downstairs hall, while the rich merchants and factors have offices above. We go toward... Uh, the merchants selling everyday items, though? No, we don't need a toothbrush. Uh, the pavilions are the foreign traders, maybe. Maybe and probably, because I don't see what I'm looking for. <laughs> the pharmacist stalls, not yet. Uh, this is where you go and buy uh, reagents for your mark alchemist. The Fugger, Fugger banking offices, this is the, in, the, in the office here, the Medici representative. These are banks. Um, yeah, medieval Germany had banks. I was surprised when I first got this game. It's like, whoa, these, these, like, back then people had banks and stuff. That's awesome. And uh, we'll, we'll do this once I start actually making in the cash, which won't be forever. Um, and the Hanseatic League Hall. These guys, they, they ask people to do them things, and we're not there yet. So, um... We're gonna go, uh... Walk into one of these tents here. And see if the foreign traders have any goods for us that we can use. Uh, yeah, this is the barter screen. Um... The uh, Tobias is representing us. The team. With, uh, he's holding the purse. And, uh... You want the guy with the high charisma doing the bartering because it'll uh, inc it'll decrease the, the buy price and increase the sell price. Alright. And he holds a purse of 10 groschen and 11 peffings, which equals 131 31 fennigs. I think I said that wrong. Peffings, fennigs, whatever. Um, yeah, the game's kind enough to break it down into pennies so that, uh, you know, this, this isn't confusing. But uh, just FYI, I think in this game, uh, 12 fennigs equals a groschen. Groschen and uh, 20 Groschen equals a Florin. Okay. So, Tobias, you need a blunt weapon. And the foreign traders, they have like a variety of crap for sale. Um, they're, the one thing that's the same about the foreign traders in every city is that the quality of their goods is always 25. So if you want average stuff, you go to the foreign traders. He needs a club, so we're gonna buy uh, a club for 27 fennigs. It's cheap, but it's more expensive than I thought it'd be. Okay. Alright, so you got a club. And notice the uh, difference in the sell prices between the crossbow and the club. So I did this right. Um, you know, with the uh, making sure that the missile device skill is higher than the club skill, so he doesn't start with the stinky club that costs nothing. Short Spear is 129, really? Okay, well, I'd say you need a short... Oh, I can't afford that. Okay, here is a uh, cool tip number... Number two. Has there been a number one? Um, when you start the game, I, I recommend you sell the Alchemist potions because they're worth monies, and you need the monies, and the potions, you don't need as much. Like the Eye Burn, and the Stone Tar, and the New Wind. Um... You'll find out what they do way later. Um, we won't really be in any any uh, situations where we'll need potions for a long time, so uh, they can wait. Okay, so that that brought us up to uh, 603 fennigs. Or wait, we we even got gold pieces. The the merchants all throwing us gold pieces for our potions. Good job, Peng. Right. Oh, Peng only has a throwing knife. Peng is Peng is stark naked. <laughs> I don't think he's naked, he just doesn't have any armor represented on his paper doll. But I'm sure Ping is naked. He is not afraid. He's not ashamed of his uh, his anatomy. He's saying that we should be, we should all be proud of what uh, God gifted us with. the uh, His ultimate creations. Human beings. We shouldn't, we shouldn't hide our body parts. Actually, I think these arrows too. But you can also buy the short, belt, short spear now. Okay. And before I forget, I am going to buy those arrows. Because she ate them. Five. I think five arrows is good, and then Tobias needs bolts, which are called quarrels in this game. Two, three, four, five. Okay. What else do I need? Uh, I think he needs a blade weapon. And the foreign trader's got a long sword for 343. No. Or a poniard, or a field axe. Field axes, they're they're not very great. They're like uh, wood cutting axes. Um, they're not even real weapons, so to say. So uh, I don't really recommend you buy these. 
they're not very good. They don't have any uh, penetration power. And I'll go over more about that kind of stuff once we start fighting things. But uh, yeah, not, not very good weapons. Ponyards, I think, are like punching daggers of some kind. Like, they're, they're weapons designed to, to, to punch through armor or something, I think. I don't know. I might be completely bullshitting here. But uh, these aren't too bad weapons, Ponyards. I kind of. I think daggers are cheaper, just that the pawn quarters, the pawn traders don't have it. Oh, you know what? Alright, we'll leave. We'll, we got what we sort of wanted. Did I give XCM the spear? No, I didn't. This, I'm not sure if I need to do this, but I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to do the same with Tobias. Great club, there you go. Look at, look at this diesel club. It's awesome. Okay, and, um, right, for the dagger, I am going to need to go back to the main street and then head towards this, the craft guilds and other dark, darker side alleys. Alright, so navigating through the narrow streets, we seek the, uh, the guilds and craftsmen, sir, but I can't speak, uh, they're specializing in arms and armor. There's other places too, but uh, we'll get to those later. Like the guilds and crafts, who special less violent pursuits. These guys are useful too. Well, let's go ahead toward the uh, the swordsmiths and the armorers. As you walk, as you walk, you look down each cobblestone street. At ground level, signs with pictures portraying the various guilds and crafts. I I read this all wrong. <laughs> but we head toward the blacksmiths. Oh, all right, we head towards the blacksmiths. Um, usually yeah, a city has a, like, a sword, like, a weapons guild and an armorer's guild. I guess the city is very small. It only has a blacksmith. Okay. And a blacksmith is a combination of, the bo of both. And they sell... Oh! I probably could have gotten a better deal of buying stuff from, from here than the foreign traders, because, uh... Their quality is lower. Hmm. Now, at the uh, Market Plaza, I was actually looking for the pawn shop, which sells even lower quality goods. Um, yeah, they're low quality, but uh, it's it's a you know good deal for studying equipment. What was I looking for? Yeah, they don't. Yeah, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have the dagger I'm looking for. So I guess Ping is Ping is getting the punching dagger. Ponyard. There we go. Well, I think it's like a it's like a dagger with like a like a basket handle, you know that that like a thing that a rapier has sort of, but it's a miniature. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> it's a ponyard. You look it up. Um. All right. So Ping at least has a weapon now. He is. He needs his. He needs clothes. Let's see. Alright, so we got leather armor that covers the vitals. See the V's here? Stands for vitals. Go down further. L's or, or limbs. Um, usually, limb armor is more expensive than vital armor. I think just because limb armor is more articulated and it probably costs more to make. I don't know. I don't know exactly the reason why, just the way it is. Um. Alright, so we can buy him two sets. We can buy him a full suit of leather. Although that's not very good protection. It's, it's going to have to deal. Um, Non-metal armors. Not very protective in this game. Um, I'll, you know what? I'll explain all this later. <laughs> Once we start fighting and do some downtime. Because uh, the whole damage system in this game and the, and the combat system, it doesn't seem apparent when you're just kind of playing and clicking around, but it's deep. There's a lot of uh, neat calculations involved that makes it really realistic. Like I'll just say that this game has a, this game works on a penetration system, so that the, like weapons have a have a certain penetration value, and an armor has a certain hardness value, and if the weapon is higher. The penetration value is higher than the armor hardness value. It it deals, it deals the the bad damage, the green damage. All right, so this is a pony art. See now we can see what it looks like. It's it sort of has that, 
big handle thing I was talking about, and it looks punchy. It, it really doesn't. It's okay. All right, so now we are sort of fully loco, right? We got, we got, we got some armors. Okay. Now let's leave. Now, um, let's uh, yeah, you know, let's take a walk toward the other crafts and guilds, see what they have to offer. Looking down the twisting streets, you can easily spot the picture signs that proclaim Gosser's guilds and crafts. So we go to. Alright, yeah, so these guys are the non-violent pursuiter guys. Uh, we got uh, the townhouse of a respected physician and healer. Uh, this is the guy you go to uh, if you don't feel like spending time in an inn healing forever. Um, you can, you know, for a price, get a few points of your strength back through the physician. Depending on a certain thing. On a bunch of things. <laughs> which I might go over later. Um... The Tinker Square, where the shops of fine artisans are half concealed by tinker stalls and wagons. These are the Artificer guys, or the Artificing Guild. Uh, they sell all kinds of things related to, to a guy of artifice, like uh, impact weapons and lock picks and stuff. Yeah, let's walk in. The Tinker Wagons are on the Tinker Wagons around the square partly conceal the more dignified shops of established artisans and craftsmen. So we uh, we visit the wagon and shop to to go uh, window shopping. Yeah, they got they got giant cudgels and maces and all sorts of blunt weapons and pole arms and I lied. All right, so not exactly what I was. I was looking for a lockpick, but they don't have it. Yeah, I think the city is pretty small. Alright, so uh, we're not going to request a meeting with the guild masters. And this place doesn't even have... A... Wow. I was looking for the alchemist guild or whatever, but apparently Gosser doesn't house one. This place must be tiny. <laughs> Where do we start? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look that up later. The clothes maker street and important guild in any city. Yeah, they don't, they don't do anything. There, there's a certain thing. There's a certain thing you have to do to get into the clothes maker street and talk to them. All right, let's go back to the main street. Looking down the main street of Gosser, we said toward. All right, you know what? I am gonna check something. This is the you right click to get into this uh, menu bar here. You can set it's like an option screen. You can set the difficulty and uh, other sort of things. Um, but what we're going to do is go into the party info. We can change marching order too, which is useful. Okay, so this is the, like a, uh, what do you call it? I guess, like a, like a this screen. I can't think of the word. But um, it shows us our total fame. We want to get this, the, the object of this game is to get this number as high as possible. So this game is like an RPG where you're reaching for a high score. Isn't that awesome? I thought that was an awesome idea. It blew me away. Um, because of date, unfortunately, in this game, it doesn't display the year. But rest assured, it is the year 1400, and it's August 26. And it is 14 o'clock. Um, sex? Uh, it's not time for sex, but... Um, it's it's like some kind of German clock system, or some kind of European clock system. It works on like a three-hour clock. I think it's like... It has something to do with... With... Uh, like the the time church has mass or something like that. I, I don't know if they remember, but every three hours is a different name. That's I think the only ones that are really important are prime and vespers because that's the time for mass or something. Anyway, uh, the local reputation we're we're not known. We got nine points of local rep. Uh, we're in the city of Gosler, um, and this is our location on the map. See, this is a this is a like a like a map of Germany in the 1400s. I think it's pretty pretty authentic. It's pretty genuine, I think. I think they placed all these cities where they were before, you know, back in the medieval period. So that's that's cool points. That's education tainment points, yes. So this is where we are. It is small size. Okay, so I, I guess that's good. We need to go to a larger city so we can uh, have access to, to better stores and things. Alright, and uh, notes. The... the this is the, the amount that we have in banknotes. We don't have any. Um, and this is the Philosopher's Stone. Philosopher's Stone is like a, is a something that I'll explain later. It has something to do with alchemy. 
All right. So it is a small city. But what we're going to do is we are going to head toward the spires of the great churches. The tall spires of a gothic church arrow into the sky above you. Impressed, we look around and... We can easily visit the Dom, Great Cathedral of Gosler. Can't be that great with the city this this small. Or we can visit the uh, the St. Joka Bigga Jika Bigga, a well-known church. Um, or visit the Riking Grab My Nuts, where monks study church law and, and menstruation. Or we can head toward the main city square from here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go and grab my nuts by going to the Rikes and Gluckster. How, how that became grab my nuts, I have no clue. Just I am that perverted. Alright. An elderly, clear eyed monk bells and asks your business. You explain that you, uh. Alright. Whenever I start the game, after I do all my shopping, this is where I head toward. Um, because, uh, through the monastery, we can go and study saints. And this is very important for Inferno, because we want to collect as many saints as we can. It's like collecting Pokemon. See, there's like a collect collection aspect to this game. So for all you, like, uh, um, guys that like collecting things in video games, you know, this this game has uh, an avenue for you, for saints. So you got to catch them all. You know, Holy mon! Alright. The old monk promises to uh, inquire and bid you wait for an answer. Uh, you take seats on a wooden bench and wait. Alright, cool. I think we made it. As you are escorted into the library, your guide whispers, A gift of one devotion to help maintain the library, quote-unquote, will be appreciated. The old librarian nods and talks happily about the documents they have concerning various saints. You discuss your preferences and discover that today you only have time to study one saint and only one person can see the sources at a time. I always thought this was weird, but it's, I think it's like a game balance thing. <laughs> Um, so we can donate one groshen and select a saint uh, to study, and only one person can benefit. That'll be Inferno, and uh, we have uh, four choices here. Um, each each monastery in a city will randomly generate four saints that you can research. Um, and uh, cities can double up saints, like as in uh, like. Another city can have uh, a monastery that teaches Saint Mal Rice, for example. So there, there is a, a probability that you won't be getting every saint in the game. There, actually, there's a high probability. Not not every seven, not every saint appears in the game, which is kind of cool. So you have to, you know, if there's that certain saint that you love that you use every single time, well, he might not show up in a game, which will you know make you play differently. Okay. So I don't know what these saints are. I could look them up, but I don't feel like it. So I'm just gonna randomly select one, and uh, you know that, that's fun too. You know, randomly selecting without not knowing. Mm, I think I'll go for Saint Barbara because I think she was the saint, saint, patron saint of artillery, which sounds badass. And it takes some time to to study. I think it takes up until up until nighttime, and that is why I like to do this at the end of the day. So that, um, you know, you're not spending 10 hours that you could have gone shopping sitting in the library. You're only spending the hour until nightfall. But uh, here's the thing, though. Um, once you study a saint, you can't get back to the library again. At least not for a very, very, very long time. I think maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe not for like a month or two. But I think it's just so you can't keep coming back and studying every saint. It's another, probably a game balance issue. But yeah, we're, we're leaving. I just wanted to tell my audience that the monastery monks look disturbed. Uh, Alright, but now when we... Oh, you know what? We, we need to go check what uh, St. Barbara is. Let's see if I'm right. If I remember what St. Barbara was. We can cast her! Awesome! Alright. Uh, patron saint of gunners, miners, builders, and artillery. I was correct. I'm, I'm awesome. Betrayed by her own father. She became a virgin martyr for her faith. She greatly increases artifice and provides a very great increase to mechanical missile skill. She also prevents death from wounds for a period. That's pimp. Saint Barbara, I love you, and she's very easy to cast. All right, cool beans. So how much money do I have now? Ninety-three. I think it's time to invoke Saint uh, Edward the Confessor. I was actually I wanted to 
burn away my money, so that when I invoke him, I, he won't be gone off with half my half my purse. You know, of six hundred groschen or half pennies uh, that I have. Let's go back into the main street. Make sure that it's night time now. All right, it's night time. And night time means combat. Um. You know what? We're gonna invoke. We're gonna invoke the confessor now. Because uh, when we go fight guys, they drop loot, and that gives, that's gonna give us money. Money that I don't want Saint Edward to take. So we're gonna invest on, in some divine favor to make sure it succeeds. Use my hotkeys. Yeah, this game has hotkeys, which is fantastic. I, I was playing a lot of games, like especially XCOM, where they, they lack hotkeys, and it drove me insane. Because I got so pampered with hotkeys in this game. Alright, um, we're gonna pray for, uh, I don't know, what, what, what do you do? Intelligence, perception, all weapon skills, and writing. Alright, let's pray for pain, because I think it's the most, uh, not combat capable. Yay! Writing chains to 2 to 15. Edge weapons to 17. Impact weapons to 14. Flail stuff. Stuff. Wow. 27 throwing. Not bad. Alright. Now everybody should have 20 virtue. Yay! We, we just feel suddenly virtuous. Sweet. Feel. Giving... The Confessor. How much money did we give? It wasn't even that much. We gave him 20-ish fennigs. Made us feel that much virtuous. 20 fennigs for 20 virtue. That sounds like the greatest deal ever. Alright. Now, um, at night, the uh, bandits and muggers start roaming the streets. And um, it is your primary source for early experience points. Um, and the best way to get into fights with them is, well, all sorts of ways. You just, like, walk around and they just randomly come up. But going to the wars and docks usually provokes them. Or maybe not. Um, and also, during night, during the night, the, the city watch is on patrol. Uh, there's a curfew in every city, so, uh, people past curfew has to pay, have to pay a fine. Um, if they're caught out in the street. So you want to make sure you take side alleys and stuff when you are... I think I can read that stuff. Okay, so we're walking down the side street, and uh, the tiny gleams from occasional windows provide barely enough light to outline the buildings along the street. Amid impenetrable shadows, you move toward... Mm. Let's head toward... A dark grove of trees where you can wait unnoticed, but hopefully noticed by bandits. There we go. Yeah, when the game makes a fart sound like that, that usually means that you, you've got the attention of some bandits. Alright, so this is the super awesome combat screen. And, um, you could scroll around and things by holding down the shift button and getting the arrow to the edge of the screen. You don't know how long it took me to figure this out. Alright. Um, so our guys are represented here. These are the bad guys. Um, wow, where do I start? You can select guys by clicking on them. <laughs> uh, first thing first, I am going to, uh, you, you, you bring up the, the combat menu by right-clicking, and here are the options available to you. You got all these things, but first of all, we're going to switch the missiles. Alright, so, uh, Tobias pulls out his crossbow, and then... You can click on a guy to, to have Tobias aim, and that bullseye means that he's aiming at him. Alright. Now, I have Ping selected. He's going to get his throwing knife, and I don't think he's a throw over to him. No, he can't. Oh, he can throw at this guy, though. Alright, you can throw it at that guy. Unfortunately, Inferno doesn't have a bow yet, so we will switch to Axiana, who's going to... Let's see, draw out her bow, and then one of these suckers, alright? And then we're gonna fire. Uh, the game is in, uh, starts paused, combat. Um, you unpause it by hitting the space button. So here we go. 